major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Bill Howe Family of Companies, providing San Diego with plumbing, heating and air, restoration, flood and remodeling services for over 40 years. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE or visit billhowe.com. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening. It's Friday, June 24th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Much of our coverage tonight is devoted to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision that legalized abortion. Protests are taking place locally and across the country. We'll have more on that in a moment, including the impact here in California. But first, the decision itself. Karen Kaifa has the latest from Washington. Roe v. Wade is no more after the court issued an historic opinion Friday overturning the landmark decision that stood for nearly 50 years. We trust women. We won't go back. The decision laid out in Doms v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, written by Justice Samuel Alito, finds that there is no longer a federal constitutional right to an abortion. Alito wrote in part, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences. The three dissenting judges, Kagan, Sotomayor, and Breyer, warn that this decision will have a wide-ranging impact on women across the country, writing, whatever the exact scope of the coming laws, one result of today's decision is certain, the curtailment of women's rights and of their status as free and equal citizens. At least two dozen states are now in position to ban abortion, which could lead to a number of future legal showdowns. It's a slap in the face to women about using their own judgment to make their own decisions about their reproductive freedom. Conservatives like former Vice President Mike Pence commending the justices for, quote, having the courage of their convictions. President Joe Biden, meanwhile, had this to say. The only way we can secure a woman's right to choose in the balance that existed is for Congress to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade as federal law. Outside the Supreme Court, I'm Karen Kaifa. And local protesters will be making their voices heard loud and clear as demonstrations get underway tonight downtown. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman is live with reaction. Matt? Yeah, Maya, that protest down here, I know it looks like it's a little bit quiet down here right now, but it's going to be packed in about an hour. Now, San Diegans, they're going to be down here voicing their displeasure after the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade and take away a woman's constitutional right to an abortion. Now, earlier today, we got reaction from local lawmakers and doctors about this landmark reversal. When I first heard the news, I started shaking with anger and rage. I am so furious about this decision. As a young woman and as one of the few women of reproductive age in Congress, this decision feels very personal. Uh, it feels like five radical judges are saying that they know more about my body and my health care decisions than I do. Democratic Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs says she's worried about what's coming next. We already know that Republicans have said that if they get into power, they want to enact a nationwide abortion ban. Uh, it is up to all of us to make sure that we do not let that happen. Local Assembly member Akila Weber is an OBGYN. She's been in the room when women are contemplating abortions and warns that they will not go away in the states that ban them. What it will mean is that certain women Certain families, oftentimes who are um, underrepresented, don't have a voice for themselves, will have to bear the burden of either leaving their state, which is expensive, to go and get the health care that should be afforded to them, or they will have a procedure that is unsafe, risking their lives and their future fertility. And, um, and this is why I say this is a very, very sad sad day on so many different levels. The president of the San Diego County Medical Society says the courts do not belong in her exam room. Even though I knew it was coming, it was still shock and devastating. I have two young daughters and my mind after my devastation and kind of, I can't believe this is happening. I went to them. I went to them. I thought about how their rights were now removed 
and how much work they have to do to kind of put the rights back in their hands. Local Planned Parenthood officials say they expect to see more women traveling from so-called trigger states. They will outlaw abortions within 30 days of today's ruling. The stakes we are up against make us more committed than ever to your sexual and reproductive health. Planned Parenthood stands for care, and we won't ever give up. Not now, not ever, and our doors are open for all. A constitutional amendment to further codify the right to abortions in California is expected to be taken up by the Assembly next week. An upset first partner of California described the High Court's decision as a sign of the justices' priorities. The court has proven that it believes guns should have more rights than women. This is insane. This is toxic masculinities at work in the highest court in the country. The county's lone Republican congressman, Representative Daryl Issa, issued a statement on Twitter that says, in part, today is a great day for the cause and principle of life. The Supreme Court upheld its core obligation to discharge its duties faithfully and impartially. Now, state lawmakers, they're hoping to pass that constitutional amendment in time so that it can go before voters in November. Now, that would take require a two-thirds vote for that to pass. And as you can see behind me here downtown outside the courthouse, demonstrators are starting to gather for this protest after the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. That protest scheduled to start around 6.30. We're expecting a lot of people down here. There's also another demonstration that's happening near Waterfront Park. Maya, we'll send it back to you. Thank you for that report, Matt. And today's Supreme Court ruling will have the most long-lasting effect on the younger generation. It becomes a teachable moment in history as our team coverage continues with KPBS education reporter M.G. Perez. Campus tours are underway this week across San Diego State University. Parents have come here to consider the school as the next step in their child's education. The news from the Supreme Court this morning will now be a new chapter in history. It's horrible that these these justices are, you know, imparting, you know, a law on other people's right to privacy. If um, they can attack a woman's body and they can attack a lot of other things. Anika Pfeiffer Bone is an SDSU senior studying nursing. She's on campus for summer classes with plans for a PhD and her own practice in women's health care someday to educate patients faced with terminating a pregnancy. It's not easy to be a parent and people that make those decisions I'm sure it doesn't come from a lighthearted place. Hundreds of applicants came to a job fair on the campus of San Diego Unified's Education Center today. They came looking for employment, knowing they will have to address the historic abortion rights ruling with students this fall. Jacob DeGarrig is credentialed to teach world and U.S. history in middle school. Here's his plan. I give them the information to create their own dialogue, and then I encourage them to take that outside of the classroom, including talking to their parents as well as the community. It is an important decision that happened today for later girls. Carmen Maloney is looking for a job as a preschool teacher's assistant. She's heartbroken about the long-lasting impact on the youngest generation. Sad because they now will be able to make their own decisions to something so important. Everybody is supposed to decide what they want. The San Diego Unified Board of Education made the district's opinion on this issue clear back in May. That's when a draft of the Supreme Court ruling leaked. A few days later, the board passed a resolution that said in part the district will continue to be a champion and leader of health equity and reproductive rights for all. More life lessons to be taught as history is being made. M.G. Perez, KPBS News. And this decision is cause for celebration for abortion rights opponents, but it's not as black and white as it may seem. Many fear this decision could drive a wedge for people who feel marginalized. KPBS reporter Kitty Alvarado spoke with a local pastor and a politician who both believe people should come first on an emotional day like today. My reaction's mixed, which you might not expect to hear from a pastor of a church. While some are celebrating today's Supreme Court decision, Pastor Phil Metzger of Calvary San Diego is taking a different approach. 
He says there's no doubt today is a victory for life, but it's also a day to remember those who are struggling with this ruling. There's a whole group of people that don't see today as like a victory. They see it as a huge loss. And I don't have to kind of rub that in on anybody like, oh, yay for this, because I don't want to demonize uh, people that have had to make the hard choice of having an abortion. He also says it's not just women who are feeling fearful after this ruling. It's also people on the margins, including the LGBTQ community. It's a reality that when one thing, when one domino falls, it makes us all go, how many other dominoes are about to, to fall? So I get the fear that, you know, certain communities in our, in our state and country feel. Senate President Pro Tem Tony Atkins of San Diego says she's been getting calls from people of all colors and creeds who are fearful of what's next. Especially as you see what's going on in other states, uh, Florida, don't say gay. Uh, I mean, there is a reason people are afraid, and um, I've already heard from our caucus, the LGBTQ caucus, this morning. She got emotional about women who might have to think about traveling for abortions. It's going to become more of a complicated procedure. It's going to become more expensive, and time is of the essence. So, you know, I just can't, I cannot even imagine what it must feel like to be one of those women. Cardinal designate Robert McElroy, the leader of the San Diego Roman Catholic Diocese, issued a statement saying while the church celebrates the decision, more must be done to support families, adding, in many ways, our work has just begun. Back at Calvary San Diego, Metzger says, now more than ever, no matter what we believe, we must reach out and love our neighbor, because chances are we all know someone who's had to make a decision we haven't had to make ourselves. Every place, I don't care what institution it is, statistically, somebody in that group had an abortion. So we have to ask ourselves, are they my enemy? They're not. And whatever reason brought them to making these hard choices, God loves them. Kitty Alvarado, KPBS News. And this Supreme Court ruling was made possible by the three newest justices nominated by President Trump. Two were rushed through weeks before elections, and another was given a seat held vacant by Republican senators during the Obama administration. All were asked if they would overturn Roe versus Wade. Here's how they answered. Is Roe a super precedent? How would you define super precedent? And I'm answering a lot of questions about Roe, which I think indicates that Roe doesn't fall in that category. And scholars across the spectrum say that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. But descriptively, it does mean that it's a case, not a case that everyone has accepted and doesn't call for its overruling. As a judge, it is an important precedent of the Supreme Court. By it, I mean Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey, been reaffirmed many times. Casey is precedent on precedent, which itself is an important factor. Senator, as the book explains, um, the Supreme Court of the United States has held in Roe versus Wade that um, a fetus is not a person for purposes of the 14th Amendment. And the book explains that. Do you accept that? That's the law of the land. I accept the law of the land, Senator, yes. PBS NewsHour will have special coverage tonight on the Supreme Court decision. It starts at 8 o'clock here on KPBS. And we'll have another live update on the protest that's happening downtown tonight later on in this newscast. And this morning's ruling was announced just hours after a rare moment of bipartisan cooperation on gun safety. Gloria Pasmino has more on the vote to advance some of the most significant action in years to address gun violence in America. On this vote, the yeas are 234, the nays are 193. The motion is adopted. In what amounts to the first major federal gun safety legislation in decades, Congress approved a bipartisan gun deal Friday. 
We take a historic first step toward ending the epidemic of gun violence in this nation. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act includes $750 million for mental health, school safety, crisis intervention programs, and incentives for states to enact red flag laws. The measure also makes changes to the gun purchasing process for people ages 18 to 21 and closes the so-called boyfriend loophole, banning anyone convicted of domestic violence against a partner in a serious relationship from owning a gun. Lawmakers were spurred to action in the aftermath of recent mass shootings. The bipartisan deal required the support of 15 Republicans in the Senate. This is the sweet spot, Madam President, making America safer, especially for kids in school, without making our country one bit less free. Still, House Republicans lined up in opposition of the bill. Today, they're coming after your Second Amendment liberties. I would urge a no vote. President Biden is expected to sign the bill into law. Gloria Pasmino, KPBS News. Child care is hard to find across the country and in the San Diego region. We've previously reported that one in eight child care centers closed here during COVID. KPBS investigative reporter Claire Trugeser tells us some areas were disproportionately hit, creating what are called child care deserts. 14-month-old Callan Turlecki has a lot to say. Normal for a toddler, but not for his mom's work meetings. And so it's kind of like scramble and find backup for taking care of my son while I finish up the work day while she goes to do that. I mean, if he was in daycare, it would be consistent. I'd drop him off and pick him up. But he's not in daycare because all the slots in his rural North County town, Fallbrook, are taken. We are on like five wait lists. <laughs> Um, it stretches from here in Fallbrook down to Oceanside. Um, everybody is booked. Terlecki and other Fallbrook parents are living in the biggest child care desert in the county. There is just one licensed child care slot for every four kids under age five in their region, according to data from the San Diego YMCA. And not just in Fallbrook, it's Bonzel, Oceanside, Vista, Temecula. Like you might get lucky to get something in Temecula, but that's you know, a 30 minute drive from here. The need for childcare is dire everywhere. Staffing shortages, rising costs, and COVID forced many of these childcare businesses to close. Added challenges make the situation even worse in the Fallbrook region. A lot of the buildings are older, and so sometimes they don't meet the the regulations for licensing. Nikki Bowles owns one of the few preschools in the area. At least seven other child care centers closed during COVID, according to state licensing data. Their providers were older and didn't want to risk or had caught COVID and didn't want to risk exposing other people. Um, but because they were older, they decided to retire. The Fallbrook region's proximity to Camp Pendleton means lots of families with young kids live there, and those kids might not get into military child care. The population of kids under five has grown 16% in the last 10 years, far outpacing overall population growth, and supply hasn't kept up with demand. Bowles is about to add 24 more slots specifically for infants. I haven't advertised. I haven't done anything. I've had people coming by and stopping and asking about the infant care and when it's going to open. So I have 20, 20 families on a waiting list. I just kind of became aware of the, the need. I've been talking to parents of, you know, quality child care in the area. Another Fallbrook resident, Dennis Ashworth, recently retired and during COVID decided to open a home child care with his wife. Right now we have three children under two and three children over two. So the phone's been ringing off the hook about uh, moms with really young children looking for daycare. The state currently has funding to help providers like the Ashworths get their child care license, says Lori Hahn with the YMCA's Child Care Resource and Referral Program. Helping them um, open their license for the first time or expand their license to a large license. Um, also, if they want to expand to non-traditional hours or to change their the children they care for to include infants and toddlers. If you're happy and you don't clap your hands, 
Ashworth just expanded his license to take in more kids. He says he's glad to use his energy and his Fallbrook home to help families in his village. But if we weren't doing this, you know, what would I be doing? You know, just sitting around and getting old, older. So I think it does keep you young and, and it's... It's kind of exciting every morning when the parents pull up with the kids, you know, and you chit chat with them, and the kids are always excited. So it's a good thing. But he knows adding a few more spaces at his home does little to change Fallbrook's status as a child care desert. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News. Just in time for another heat wave, San Diego's Mountain View community finally has a new pool. KPBS reporter Jacob Ayer takes us to the long-awaited opening day. Two, one. Woo! After seven years without a pool, hundreds of kids and family members were at Jackie Robinson Family YMCA in southeast San Diego today to enjoy the grand opening of the facility's aquatic center. Jackie Robinson Family YMCA Executive Director Ana Arancibia says this has been a long time coming. This pool is more than just a pool. It's a symbol of access, community, and belonging for all. With this new incredible amenity, we hope to create a positive community gathering space that provides everyone access to opportunities that lead to healthy and happy lives. On the hot late June Friday, San Diego City Council member Monica Montgomery Stepp told the crowd almost 80% of low-income children have never taken a swimming lesson. And this is alarming because we also know that drowning continues to be one of the top accidental deaths of our kids, especially in the summer months. So giving our children a place to take swimming lessons close to their homes can save lives in the future. YMCA board member Gene Bailey said the community has been asking for this project for decades, but lacked the funding until recently. So, to the youngsters who are listening to today, big dream, dream big, work very, very hard, and never, never, ever give up. Official hours for the pool are still undecided and will depend on the ability to staff much-needed lifeguards. But swim lessons will begin at the new pool on July 5th and the center will be offering 70 free swim lessons in the coming months. Jacob Ayer, KPBS News. As we take a look at our weather headlines, well, it looks like the weekend will be seasonably warm and dry uh, around the coastal communities. Inland sections will be warmer and it'll be hot and breezy in the mountains and there'll be an elevated fire threat. Looking ahead to next week, it does look like uh, some moisture will return yeah, uh, very warm and humid, and there could be some spotty storms, especially in the mountains. For now, though, on the water vapor loop, you can see how the air is really dried out. See how the yellow and orange? Uh, that's a dry flow right over us. Uh, for tonight, though, there will be some low clouds and fog. Uh, temperatures drop down to 64 in uh, the metro area. And as we take a, a look uh, around uh, our region here, Borrego Springs, uh, 78. Uh, Mount Laguna, 66. And Campo, 59. Uh, Oceanside 59 in El Cajon at 63. Here's a look at our weekend weather. Well, we'll have a weak onshore flow comfortable at the coast. It should be hot and dry in the interior with that elevated fire threat. We will have morning clouds uh, right along the, the coast and the beaches, but the marine layer pretty shallow, so it should melt away and just some patchy clouds to the coast in the afternoon. Otherwise, lots of sunshine. As we take a look at the forecast, Saturday, uh, beautiful right near the coast, uh, mid to upper 70s. Inland section, so getting hot, 93 in El Cajon, 94 in Ramona. Borrego Springs, 109. Campo is at 94. Looking ahead uh, to the early part of next week, the upper high will be to our north. That could allow some of the moisture to come in from the east. That's why we think there could be some spotty storms returning in the mountains. Along the coast, clouds and sunshine, a little bit warmer here. Uh, early part of next week. Inland sections, uh, it'll be dry and it will be hot with plenty of sunshine, low 90s for the most part. In the mountains, it'll be breezy and there could be some storms around as moisture returns early next week. And then as we take you to the deserts, it's mostly sunny and hot. And for KBBS News, I'm meteorologist Mark Mancuso. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the News Hour, the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, upending nearly 50 years of abortion rights in the U.S. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS.
And now let's go back to KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman. He is live in downtown San Diego where protest of today's Supreme Court ruling on abortion is happening tonight. Matt? Maya, earlier we told you it was quiet down here, but people were going to be coming. And as you can see behind me, the crowds are starting to come here downtown in front of the courthouse. Now, this protest obviously happening after the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade and take away a woman's constitutional right to an abortion. As you can see here behind me, organizers are getting ready for this demonstration. It's scheduled to really start kicking off at about 630. So we're still about an hour away here. We talked with one of the organizers, and they're hoping that a lot of people are going to be coming out here. She said that Roe has been under attack ever since it became the law of the land. People here, they say they're not so worried about California, but they are very concerned about access in states with trigger laws. They say will disproportionately affect people who aren't able to do things like travel for abortions. People here are also saying that abortions in state that ban them, they're not going to go away abortions, but instead women, they're going to be having unsafe ones. There's also another rally that's going to be scheduled here downtown. That one's near the waterfront. That one's starting at 7 o'clock and organizers here tell me there's also going to be another protest over the weekend. That one will be in Escondido. Here downtown in front of the courthouse, Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. And thank you for bringing us that report, Matt. PBS NewsHour will have special coverage tonight on the Supreme Court decision, and it starts here on KPBS at 8 o'clock. And as always, you can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Have a good evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by... Bill Howe Family of Companies, providing San Diego with plumbing, heating and air, restoration, flood and remodeling services for over 40 years. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE or visit billhowe.com. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you.